Hello, here is Nox and today I will show you how to fix a noisy power supply fan. Today here we have a Cooler Master B500 uh, power supply and we need to change the fan that's in it. So first of all we're going to remove uh, the top cover and we need to do that by removing the four screws that are on the top and when you remove these four screws you will void the warranty if you have the warranty so have that in mind now after we have removed all four screws uh, we will need to lift off uh, the top cover and this will be a little bit difficult on these uh, brand name power supplies uh, because it's really a tight fit so you will have to apply apply a little bit more force to it as you can see here and there we go it's open now carefully lift the uh, top off and be careful not to damage the cable here we can see the cable connector and the ca cable going to the fan now we need to disconnect it of course and uh, after we've disconnected it, we can see here the fan, the top cover, the fan grill, and we can leave that now for the side. I just want to show you here that we have where the where actually the uh, fan header and the fan speed controller is. Now, we'll going over to the second part, and that is removing the fan from the top cover. That. Uh, needs to be done by removing the four screws that hold the fan and the fan grill to the uh, top cover. As you can see here, uh, removing those four screws is pretty easy, but you need to have in mind that the front grill uh, will fall off, so uh, immediately after you take the last screw out and don't lose it we need to uh, keep all the parts so we can assemble everything later on back now here we see the last screw is coming out the fan grill just fall out here we have it now this is the top cover the, uh, from the power supply we can leave that by side now and here we have the old fan which is noisy and needs to be replaced. Now the next thing is we need to remove this plastic cover from it and we'll need to attach the plastic cover of course to our new fan so keep everything and we removing we will be removing it by just unscrewing these two fans uh, sorry these two screws and the plastic cover falls off. There we go now leave that by side and here is our removed fan. Now we need to take the leads off from this fan so we can actually attach them to the new fan and we will be doing that by accessing the uh, inner PCB of the fan. That is done by uh, removing this back sticker and this little rubber cap which prevents dust from getting into the fan. So I'm using here tweezers to remove that, you can see it. After that, in there you will see a white nylon, um, I don't know how is this really called, uh, but you need to remove that washer I think that it is. And it, it is pretty difficult, so you need to take some uh, pointy object and find a slit that is uh, cut into the uh, this washer and remove it by pushing upwards from the slit you see here and it pops right out so it is a little bit difficult and fiddly but you can do it and there is a silicone seal or vibration uh, thing that prevents the vibration so here we go, remove that too. And now we can take the blades out and access the inner side of the fan. 
Now I'll put them away and we can see the wires here, the red and the black one. Now we need to take the wires out. You can see that here and we cannot access the soldering points on this fan so I'm going to cut them off. Anyway, we're going to throw this fan away. So take some wire cutters and try to cut as close as possible to the uh, PCB of the fan. Here we go, uh, here you see, I'm cutting off the black wire and we have now the wire, extracted the wire that we will be attaching to our new fan. And here is our new fan, a uh, thermal take fan and we need to attach these old wires to the new fan. Of course we need to expose of, um, the soldering places so we need to peel again off the back sticker and that's pretty easy I can see it here uh, now be careful while doing this uh, so that the rubber uh, dust cap does not fall out as you can see here it is going out push it back in put the sticker somewhere and now we can access the soldering points uh, of the black and the red wire. Now we need to take of course the old wire out. So take it out of the holder and push it into a comfortable position where we can work with it. So because this, is, this wire is pretty small so it's fiddly and a little bit annoying. Uh, please remember where the red wire is soldered and where the black wire is soldered. So that is very important, you cannot uh, change the polarity. Now I'm taking a soldering iron as you can see, heating up the pad and removing the red wire. Of course I'll do the same with the black wire. As you can see here, I'm having a little bit of trouble because my soldering iron is pretty big, uh, but I didn't have a so smaller one on hand, so I use it this big one. And need to take off this black one by heating off, heating the pad, and taking out the black wire. And there we go. Now we need to uh, strip the old wire, take a little bit of insulation off with a knife and thin it. Now I'm applying flux to the wire because everything is easier with flux of course. Uh, applied decent amount of flux and because I'm using, uh, because I'm soldering on my own so nobody's helping me here, uh, this is my technique of soldering. I usually put the solder on the table and bend, bend it upwards and now I heat a little bit the wire and the solder and that is pretty much how I thin the wires. Now I thin the red wire, now we need to thin the other wire too, the black one. And here we go, heat a little bit up the wire and the solder and there we go. Now make sure the thin coat is even. And now we apply the old wires to the new fan. Now, as I earlier said, it's very important to remember the polarity. Remember where the black wire was and where the red wire was. And now just put the wire on the same place and heat the pad up. Now, be careful, it needs to be a decent solder joint. So the uh, tin needs to flow over the wire and make makes a really nice... Uh, joint. This is not a nice joint on the red wire as you can see. Now I need to reflow that and this is much better. This is good. Now I hooked up the finished fan to my external power supply and got up to, to 12 volts. It is spinning. Perfect. Working. Now we can install this new fan into our power supply. Here is our new fan with the old wires on it and we uh, check to see the way that it needs to go. So uh, the fan needs to blow 
fresh air into the power supply so that's the orientation and remember that uh, cover that we took off of the old fan now we need to put it on onto the new fan and remember the orientation with in which you took off this cover from the old fan now you need to put it on in the same orientation onto the new fan now this is an unused fan so it is a little bit difficult to put in the screws because uh, the holes are new and the screws needs to uh, make room in the plastic for them so it'll be a little bit difficult to screw them in but with a little bit of force they'll go in and the camera is not in focus but okay it's okay and one screw is in now the other screw goes in too and we check to see if the plastic cover is in the right position it's really nice there we go it's even and now we can attach the fan onto the top cover with the four screws now another check do we'll always do checks that's really important now the header goes there and the fan goes in that direction now it's important to mention that we here we have indentations on the metal as you can see and two up here two, two down and we have holes here in the power supply and those indentations and the holes need to match up so the cover goes this way and you need to keep that orientation now after we have set the, uh, the correct orientation don't forget the fan grill put it on after that you put your uh, fan on and now you, we can actually screw in the fan itself onto the top cover by using of course the four screws as I mentioned here we go I sped that a little bit up as I already said earlier this is an unused fan so it'll be uh, a little bit heavier you'll need to use some force to drive in the screws so um, as you can see I'm doing it a few times here to uh, to actually make a nice uh, to put the screws correctly in and there we go the fan sits correctly on everything is in the right position check again now we can install the uh, top cover back onto the power supply and after that we're basically finished now again the correct orientation is important don't forget to plug the fan in and use two hands for that here we go it's plugged in correctly now put the uh, top cover on and do not forget this plastic on the sides to put it in so you don't break it slide the top cover uh, carefully on and uh, be careful that you do not damage anything so be gentle with it and remember that everything has its correct place so you can see on the sides the metal cover needs to go underneath the chassis of the power supply here we go it popped right in and on the other side the same thing it needs to go in and not out there we go here we see the front isn't really uh, popped out so we need to put it back in you remember those indentations that I already said so you can just lift a little bit the top cover and push in the front so yes those two and there we go now we have to check everything to see if all the edges are correctly aligned that's important for now so you do not have to disassemble the power supply later on check the wiring to see if the wire is in uh, in the way of the blade or in uh, in a weird position so it's nice it's not causing any problems there we go now we can close up the uh, power supply with the four screws and uh, it's always nice to screw in the four screws uh, in an X pattern 
so that means when you screw in the first uh, right bottom screw the next screw you will screw in is the uh, top left screw so you can see here the next screw will be the top left screw here and so going on with that X pattern to actually screw on the top The only thing actually left after screwing on the top is to check that the power supply is working correctly before installing it into uh, our PC. And here we go. We need to just do a check. And here's the check. I'll jump start the power supply. The fan turns on. We have 12.2 volts on the 12 volt rail and that is great so thank you for watching